All right, good morning, everyone. Welcome back for day three of our series, Be Your Own Best Valentine. So Linda is not able to join us this morning, so it's just you and me here today. So we are gonna chat a little bit, but you guys, this week, more than talking about self-love and self-care, which we're doing some of, we also want to practice, actually, practice in this time that we have together. So we're going to do some of that today. And I want to start just by thanking you for being here. And I want you guys to really honor yourselves too for giving yourself the gift of this time. This is self-care, giving yourself this time to prioritize you and your mind, body, spirit, wellness is such a gift. So I just want to thank you for giving yourself that gift. And I want you to really honor and thank yourself. And I'm going to really encourage you to not fall prey to the myth of multitasking right now. Give yourself the gift of this half hour to really focus in on our time together and this practice of self-care. So set aside any other screens, close any other windows if you need to if you're at home and need to tell your family members that you are taking a half hour of time just for you and go sneak off somewhere and close the door. If you are at work and you need to close your office door, do that. And then we are going to take just a couple of minutes to practice the breath work that we learned yesterday to start off our time together today. So I'm going to encourage you to find a comfortable place to sit where you are comfortable and supported. Again, we're not multitasking. We're not cooking breakfast or lunch or making a smoothie or checking email. Set all of that aside. Find somewhere comfortable to sit and just take a few long, slow, deep breaths. Breathe in through your nose. Then hold for a count of four or five. And breathe out either through your mouth or your nose, whichever feels most comfortable to you today. And I like to breathe out for a count of seven or eight to really fully empty the lungs and the body. And as you're breathing in, maybe you imagine that breath going, flowing in through your heart, filling your lungs, filling your belly, going all the way down into the tips of your toes. And just set aside any thoughts that may be creeping in and concentrate completely on your breath. Give yourself the gift of this time, of this breath, filling this one body with life and energy and healing force. Okay, when you are ready, open your eyes and come back to join me here. I posted under yesterday's video a few different options. We talked about some options for heart-centered breathing, for belly breathing, for box breath 
for Dr. Andrew Wiles formula for breath, which is five breaths in, hold for seven, exhale for eight. There are so many different patterns that you can use. And I would encourage you to experiment with all of these and different ones may resonate with you at different times, depending on your emotional state and what you want to shift and what you are hoping to accomplish. But play around with these different types of breath because they are so powerful for bringing you back into your body, for helping you calm the nervous system, let go of stress and anxiety from circumstances and things around you that you cannot control. You can control this, this physical body. You have so much power to change your physical health, your emotional health, your mental health, your spiritual health, and all of these things work together to create the health and the life and the experience that we want to have. So today is all about being present. And I named this session, The Power of Being Present. And Breath work is a great way to get present. It's just one of many ways that you can use to get present. So if you guys have not read a book called The Power of Now, I strongly recommend it. This is a book by a spiritual teacher by the name of Eckhart Tolle. And he talks about the power of presence. And one of the things that really struck me, that really resonated deeply with me in this book, is he talks about how when we are experiencing stressful emotions, emotions that lower our energetic frequency, these almost always come from mentally living in the past or living in the future. So when we are living in the past, we are ruminating about how someone wronged us. We are worrying about something that we messed up. We are feeling embarrassment or shame or anger or frustration about things that have happened, circumstances that we can't change at this point, that we can't control, that we can't necessarily um, fix. When we are feeling worry and fear and anxiety and stress, those emotions often come from being in the future, right? We're worrying about that work assignment that is due tomorrow that we haven't started on or something that is going on with our kids the next day or the next week or an argument that we had with our spouse that morning in the past that we are going to probably have to revisit that evening when we're both home and able to talk the future, right? So we spend so much of our time with our thoughts either in the past or in the future and that steals our peace, okay? So we can restore so much emotional peace and well-being and release so much stress if we get in the habit of being present in the here and now, not living in the past, not living in the future. And I know that this is easier said than done, right? It's easy to say, not so easy to do. It takes practice. So that's one of the things that I'm going to encourage you guys to do over the course of this week and the coming days and weeks is to catch yourself. When you find yourself in the past frustrated and angry or resentful about things that have happened in the past or fearful and worried and concerned and anxious about things down the road, that are coming up in the next few moments or days or weeks. Sometimes we worry about what's gonna happen next year, right? And goodness knows, you guys, there's enough going on around us right now to worry about. But we can choose not to live in that space. We can choose to stay, stay centered right here, right now, focused on our own breath, focused on whatever it is that we are doing in this specific moment, 
So breath work is a great way to stay in the present. And when you are breathing, you try to focus solely on that breath and where it is going in your body, where you are sending it in your body. You can also focus on what you are doing in that specific moment. So if you find your thoughts going to things that are causing you worry or stress or fear or changing your emotional frequency in ways that you don't like, bring yourself back to whatever it is that you are doing in that moment. If you are brushing your teeth, say to yourself, I'm brushing my teeth. I'm brushing my teeth. I am present experiencing this sensation of brushing my teeth, this minty flavor in my mouth, whatever it is, okay? I'm pouring my coffee. I'm sipping this coffee or this, in my case, warm lemon water with fresh ginger in it. I'm breathing in that ginger and lemon. I'm sipping the tea and I'm feeling the warmth of the mug in my hands, okay? Focus on those simple little pleasures that you are experiencing in that particular moment. And this is a practice, you guys. It doesn't happen overnight. It may sound impossible if you are a worrier, but as you practice these habits, it will become more commonplace and more habitual. And when you find yourself going to that place of fear and stress and worry, and you feel that fear creeping into your body, for me, I hold anxiety in my chest. So I feel that tightening in my chest. I say, nope, not gonna do that today. Not right now. We're not gonna do that today. And I bring myself back to the present moment and I focus on my breath. I focus on what I am doing in that specific moment. I'm writing a post on social media and I'm not focused on anything except that post. I'm chopping vegetables for my dinner and I am not focusing on anything except for this, these beautiful, vibrant, colored vegetables that are going to fuel and nourish every cell in my body. That is what I'm focusing on. Okay, so bring yourself back to the present. When you start to go here and there and out here and back here into the past, bring yourself back to the present. It is so powerful, you guys. And I wanna bring you back to my definition of self-care, which is not a once in a while treat because you are so exhausted, you are about to collapse or because you work so hard and you finally, once a month, go get your nails done or go get a massage or go have coffee with a friend. No, self-care is something that we do every single day. Throughout the day, with every single choice that you make, choose the things that are going to serve and support your wellness, body, mind, and spirit, okay? And sometimes the things that we feel like doing in that moment when we pause and ask ourselves are not actually the things that are going to support our wellness. Okay. If we feel like eating the chocolate chip cookie, is that supporting our wellness? If we feel like staying up late watching Netflix, is that really supporting our wellness? If we feel like that second glass of wine, is that really supporting our wellness? Okay. And I am not perfect at this by any means. I eat the chocolate chip cookie also. So do not feel like you have to be perfect, but the vast majority of the time, choose the things that are going to serve and support your wellness. Okay. So on the, in the first day, Linda and I both gave you two, two tools to use that I hope you guys have started practicing. And that is to start breathing and tuning into yourself and asking yourself, what is it that I need in this moment? and then doing it. And if what you want in that moment is not what is going to serve you, ask yourself, or you just don't know what it is that you need. You're in that place where I was many years ago when I was completely out of touch with myself and had no earthly idea what I needed. I didn't know the answer when I asked myself that question. So if you're in that place where you don't know the answer, 
think about what would I do if this was my child? If my child had had an incredibly long, stressful day at school or at work and was struggling with these specific health complaints and symptoms and was saying, mom, what do I do? Would you say, go eat a chocolate chip cookie because that will make you feel better? No, you would say, take these herbs or these supplements and go take a warm Epsom salt bath and crawl in bed early and get a good night's sleep so that you feel better tomorrow, right? So think about how would I advise my best friend or my child if they were in this exact situation? What would I suggest that they do, okay? And it's probably not going to be staying up all night watching Netflix or eating the chocolate chip cookie. You know, sometimes those things feel good and I am not about to tell you, you can never ever do those things. But true self-care is in every moment of every day, choosing the things that are gonna serve and support your wellness so that an hour from now, you feel rested and rejuvenated and amazing and ready to do whatever it is that is next on your list, whatever it is that God put you here on this earth to do, okay? And when I eat the chocolate chip cookie, I very likely an hour later will have a headache and feel tired and sluggish and be thinking, why did I do that? The green smoothie would have fueled every cell in my body and made me feel amazing and I would be killing it right now at whatever it is I need to do. Okay, so it takes practice. Sometimes we need reminders as to why the chocolate chip cookie is not as good for our self-care as the green smoothie. And that is okay. We all need those reminders. Sometimes we have to experience that and be like, oh yeah, that's why. <laughs> that's why I don't choose that normally. Okay, so that's okay. Don't beat yourself up for that. But as you are going throughout your day making choices as to what to put in your mouth, what to do with your time, what thoughts to allow in your mind. Choose the things that are going to serve and support your wellness. And choose, instead of ruminating about the fight that you had with your child before school or your spouse or the disagreement that you're having with a friend, or the frustrating situation at work, rather than worrying about the thing that is happening next week that you can't fix or control or change right now, choose to get present. Choose to say, nope, not gonna do that to myself. I know how that feels. I know how that worry and stress feels in my body. I know what it's doing to my health. And I don't wanna do that right now. So I'm gonna choose to be here now. Okay, so yesterday I shared with you guys um, the mantras of love from a beautiful chorus. And we listened to one of them and I posted the Spotify album below that video. I may, if I remember, I'll do that again on this one. Um, because I'm going to really encourage you guys to listen to that album. There is one song, it might even be the first song on the album that is be here now. That is the mantra and it is beautiful, you guys. So if you are struggling to stay in the present moment, turn on those mantras, sing, listen to the beautiful sounds, let those mantras sink into every pore, penetrate every cell in your body. Breathe, get present, and choose to be here now rather than in the past or in the future, worrying about things you can't change or can't control or can't fix, okay? And that doesn't mean that we don't plan, that we don't have work to do, right? I obviously have to do a lot of planning in my business. We had, Linda and I had to sit down and plan out this week, right? So that's that obviously constitutes living in the future, but it's bringing up excitement. It's bringing up eagerness to share life-changing information with you guys. It is furthering the work that we were put here on this work to do. It's not just ruminating and stressing and worrying about what could possibly go wrong, how things are not going to work out, or things that are putting you in an emotional state that you don't want to be in. Okay, so 
choose to be here now. I want you guys to practice the breath work, practice being here now, and then I'm going to give you one other homework assignment for today. Okay, and this isn't something that we're going to practice here together. This is something that I want you guys to do today or tomorrow, and then I want you to report back. So comment below this video when you have done the homework assignment and let us know how it went. Okay, so a really incredibly powerful way to be here now, to be in the present moment and to shift your entire physiology, this has so many health benefits, you guys, is to have what I call a mindful meal. And ideally, every single meal would be a mindful meal. You would never put food in your mouth at any time other than a mindful meal. When you are in a calm, relaxed, parasympathetic, rest, digest, heal, and thrive state. Because when you are in a stressed go, 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 fight or flight state, your body is not focused on digestion. You, you produce less hydrochloric acid, stomach acid. You produce far fewer digestive enzymes. As a result, you are not able to break down that food effectively and absorb and utilize the nutrients. So even if you are eating the most nutrient-dense, beautiful, plant-based eating plan on the planet, if you are eating in a stressed state, you are not absorbing and utilizing the nutrients from that food. And that is such a waste. Such a waste. Okay? So this supports your digestion. It supports your emotional and mental state. So I want you guys at least one meal a day and preferably three meals a day, to make sure that you sit down at a table, even if it's very simple food, put it on a plate, get some silverware, get a napkin, get a pretty glass to put your water in or your lemon water or whatever it is that you're enjoying. Set aside your phone, any other distractions. Focus only on your food and the people that you are dining with if you are dining with other people. And if you are alone, do this anyway because it is so powerful, you guys. Sit down, give thanks for your food, breathe, take a few deep, slow breaths, appreciate the visual beauty, the colors, the smells of your food. Take a bite. Chew, chew, chew thoroughly every single bite, tasting every flavor and allowing the salivary amylase, the digestive enzymes in your saliva to begin to break down the carbohydrates. Chew until that food is a mush because this is the first step in digestion. And when we swallow our food, barely chewed, it creates a whole lot more work for the later stages of the digestive process. And you are a lot less likely to absorb and utilize all of those nutrients, okay? So chew, breathe deeply in between bites. <sighs> Enjoy your meal, okay? Allow time for those satiety hormones to be released in your brain, for your brain to know that you are eating and that you are enjoying your food so that your brain and your body feel satisfied with this beautiful meal that you have prepared for yourself, okay? So I want you to do this at least once a day, preferably twice a day, even better if you can do it three times a day, okay? I'm going to strongly encourage you not to put food in your mouth in a rushed state as you are racing out the door to work or as you are in the car driving to a meeting or as you are driving to pick the kids up from school. Take time to enjoy your food, to digest properly, to allow your body to be satisfied, to release the digestive hormone, digestive enzymes and the satiety hormones, okay? 
be present when you are eating and enjoy every delicious morsel. Chew, chew, chew. Do not drink too much water with your meal. Water is really important and you want to drink water throughout the day, but not a lot with your meal. Drink just enough to help wash down your food, but too much water dilutes the stomach acid, dilutes the digestive enzymes, and again, makes it a lot harder for your body to digest and utilize that food. You want that food broken down thoroughly. You want those nutrients absorbed into the bloodstream and carried to every cell in your body where they are fueling thyroid hormone and metabolism and the production of ATP and energy and so many different biochemical processes in your body. Okay? So throughout your day, bring your thoughts back to the present. Do not let yourself stray into lower frequency emotions that are going to create stress in your body and harm your health. As much as possible, bring yourself back to the present moment. And then I want you to start practicing the mindful meal, okay? So those are your assignments for today. I will post in the Be Your Own Best Valentine's group. You guys, if you're watching this in Nourish for Life, um, I highly suggest you join Be Your Best Valentine also. Um, I'll post the link for that below this video so that you guys can click over there and I will post the homework and some graphic reminders over in that group. Please, you guys, if you are watching the replay, let us know that you are watching. When you have done your homework, let me know that. Let me know that you are participating and that you are joining us in practicing this amazing self-love and self-care this week, you guys. And the tools that we are talking about, they are free. They are don't take very much time at all. They are things that you can incorporate into your day. Take three minutes to breathe. Take 20 minutes for a mindful meal. Okay, these things are free and easy and unbelievably impactful. Life and health changing. Okay, so thank you for being here with me today. I hope you guys have a great rest of the day. Linda and I will see you tomorrow morning for day four. If you haven't watched day one and two, you can still catch up in the group. Those had amazing information also on those two sessions. So I hope that you will go back and watch those if you haven't seen them yet. I love you guys. Thank you for being here. Thank you for investing this time in yourself and your wellness. And I will see you tomorrow.